All right, let's talk about Miles Sanders to the Panthers. This is an interesting move because the Panthers are a team that, you know, maybe might not be completely competitive right away. They, you know, were picking ninth until they traded up to the first overall pick. But, uh, you know, I think they still feel like Miles Sanders might be able to do some nice things for them and help develop their rookie quarterback, perhaps, which I find it, you know, I do think could be an interesting situation. You look at his uh, stats. Uh, these are, for whatever reason, Google wasn't coming up with his stat, stats. Google's been weird the past couple of days. I don't know what's going on, but uh, maybe I did something wrong. But anyways, you see that uh, overall, he's had pretty good stats, especially efficiency-wise. Uh, has had, you know, a 5.5 yards per carry uh, year a 5.3 yards per carry year, a 4.9 yards per carry year, and even his worst year was 4.6. Now, a lot goes into yards per carry, right? Playing behind the Eagles offensive line certainly goes into that. Uh, same thing with the, you know, again, last year was a banner year for him. Over 1,200 yards, 4.9 yards per carry, 11 touchdowns, uh, you know, really good stuff there. And he's even shown to have some receiving prowess. Maybe not these past three years as much, but he still has had some stuff. And he has a 500-yard receiving season to his name on top of it. So the stats, very good. If you look at PFF grades, which kind of give you a more insight into how exactly uh, things are you know, going for him, you see that there's, uh, you know, uh, some lower grades here, but as a whole, I would say still pretty positive. I mean, over 70, barely, but still over 70 the past two years, was over 60 his first two years. Um, Again, the passing has been very up and down. Personally, I think his passing game is actually pretty good. Uh, I'll get into that in a, a second. So again, I don't always agree with PFF grades. I am not a PFF shill. Sometimes I disagree. Uh, but when I do, it's because I've seen enough on tape to disagree. I don't just write it off. Uh, and we'll get into that in a second. But his running game has always, for the past three years at least, been very good. He's a very effective runner. Sometimes his pass blocking has had its issues. But even that isn't a disaster or anything like that. Definitely had a bad year last year, but uh, for the most part, isn't a disaster. But he's a very effective runner, and that's what the Panthers are signing him for. And let's start off with a play like this, because I know a lot of people are going to say, listen, you put me behind that uh, Eagles offensive line, I'm going to get five yards per carry. First off, no, you're not. Uh, <laughs> you're going to get killed the first time you get hit. But secondly, uh, something like this where, you know, there are plays where Sanders had to go above and beyond. Yes, the Eagles offensive line was really good. It, they were still humans out there. They were still guys uh, you know, going to block, and that means you're not always going to make your blocks every time. This time, it looked like there was supposed to be a double team. I'm not sure exactly what happens here, but as you see, the Detroit linebacker, I think he just shot the gap quickly before they could uh, get off the double team and block the linebacker, I think is what happened. But either way, what Sanders knows is happening is that there's a guy right in his face and he has something he ha you know he has to figure out what to do here but figure out something he does watch him be able to get around that tackle and pick up a really a nice chunk play got around another tackle as well again nothing crazy but you always wonder with running backs what is their true value because so much of their value is determined by the offensive line so much of you know their yards gained is determined by that stuff and by touches that typically is what happens however there is definitely an element of themselves also they are a piece of that and this is a clear example of the offensive line not giving getting him a ton of yards but still finding a way to turn it into a positive game something like this is I would say a good example where they're going to leave a player unblocked it's the player I've circled in black right there he is going to be unblocked this is part of the designed run as it's supposed to be a run towards the right as you see right here, this is, you know, the edge rusher uh, here, or the containment guy, I should say, uh, is definitely keeping a step a little bit to the outside. And this is part of the Jalen Hurts effect, which who knows, maybe it'll be a part of the CJ Stroud effect if they draft him. Maybe the Anthony Richardson effect. Who knows who the Panthers are going to draft. But you see that uh, because you have a running quarterback, the containment guy can't fully crash in, which does give you just a step, but still... I think that it doesn't seem obvious that Sanders would be able to run by him here. However, that's what Sanders is able to do. He is explosive enough to run by and make a pretty good run on that one. So again, are these, uh, you know, is this one a highlight real level play? The first one was. Is this one not necessarily, but it's still a very effective play, and it's what he was able to do well in that offense. Something like this is another example where what's going to happen on this play, it's going to be a designed run to the offense's right, which is towards the left side of the screen and watch what happens. Look, right here, you see Sanders gets the uh, ball, and there is a, there's a window to run through, and one of the things that Sanders, I think, did a really effective job 
doing in Philadelphia was Wonder was a window. Wonder was a hole to run through. He got through it and he got through it quickly. Watch him do exactly that. He is able to burst through it and pick up a nice chunk play. That was well blocked. There's no denying that. Guess what? The Panthers are going to have plays that are well blocked as well. And sometimes that's what you want in a running back is a guy who just gets you to yards your offensive line gets for you and is able to turn a well blocked play into an explosive run. There's obvious value in that, in my opinion. Again, there are plays like this that I would definitely say are, you know, a league average running back probably still does a good job with this one where you see the way uh, the blocking concept is on the screen and just watch how well blocked it is. I mean, look, Hertz gives the ball to Sanders. Sanders, again, shoots through the gap well. I would say does a good job, you know, vision-wise of knowing where to run, but barely got touched on his way to the end zone right there. Part of that is his explosiveness, but most of that is the Philadelphia offensive line is really good. And while I'm discounting it a little bit, bit, it is fair to say that, that that has inflated his numbers. There's no denying that. I think even he would say that. It, it's just true. But going over here, I want to talk about his passing game. I teased that a little bit earlier, the passing game. Well, here we go. Just going to be a check down route, right? Zone coverage. Just flip it to him underneath. See what happens. Watch as you see. That's what Hertz is going to do. He takes a snap. He flips it to uh, Miles Sanders. And let's play my favorite game. How many yards do you expect the player to get on this play? You see him right here where he is on the screen. Several Jacksonville players can run in and make a play. I don't know. For me, this looks like he might get tackled right around like the 31 or 32 yard line. That that feels about right. Maybe 33. We'll give him 33. We'll be generous. Well, as you see, he's going to do a great job of getting around, getting towards the corner, and he's able to eventually get knocked out at around a 44 yard line, 10 more yards than we expected him to get. That's yards above expected, right? That's yards above replacement level. And it really just goes to show that he does have value and there is you know definite value in adding a Miles Sanders to your team again I know that if you're the Panthers when are you going to be successful are you going to be successful in the next couple years you don't know well there's a couple things for one thing I mean if your quarterback hits and you have a good quarterback you could be successful right away look at the Bengals with Joe Burrow they went from perennial you know picking in the top 10 to they get Joe Burrow all of a sudden they're you know now picking in the bottom 10 and bottom five every year and you know someday soon maybe bottom one so it's not inconceivable to think that in the next couple of years Sanders could be effective but of course a big chunk of it you just have to assume is about the development of whichever quarterback you end up getting it's about adding as much talent around the quarterback uh, I think teams have woken up to this you can't just get, draft a quarterback put him in a terrible situation and hope it works out you do have to find talent around them the best predictor of success when it comes to young quarterbacks is getting drafted into a good situation and also, you look at Miles Sanders' contract here. So the four years, $25 million with only $11 million guaranteed, you know, for reference. You have the David Montgomery uh, contract, which was three years and had $11 million. And this one is kind of uh, written in a relatively similar way where you have the two years that basically you're keeping him for two years. Because it would be $11 million in dead cap if you cut him now. You're not going to cut him now, obviously. Then it would be uh, about $8.5 million if you cut him next year. So if he sucks this year, you're probably still keeping him one more year. However, after that, you could get rid of him for just $3 million dead cap or $1.5 million dead cap, which is not nothing, but it's pretty close to nothing. So really, it's kind of a low-risk, high-reward type move right here. I have no real issue with paying a, a running back. I have an issue with paying a running back long-term money because they do fall off a cliff pretty quickly. But I don't know. Sanders is a good player. I get why they're doing this, but that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.